Okay, so our first talk of the day will be Anastasio Stefano speaking to us about interleaving by parts for persistence in a process. Thank you, Alcana. Thank you very much, the organizers, for the invitation. So today I will present the joint work with Woodin Kim and Facundo Memoli. Uh, I'm going to discuss um, about uh, a methodology for distributing the computation of interleaving distance for persistence modules valued in a poset. Okay. So our main motivation is persistent homology, which is a main paradigm of topological data analysis. I will uh, refer to as TDA for short. It's a paradigm of TDA uh, that reveals the evolution of topological features in a data set under some given filtration in a data set. Uh, when we go to multiple parameters uh, for the source poset in the persistent modules, um, it gets more complicated to describe and understood. So that's why there are some uh, proposals for uh, studying pers the persistence in variance, notably rank invariance, and it was the beginning uh, by Carson Zomoroden, but also there are other multi-parameter versions of this, and including the spatio-temporal persistent homology of human memory, and also great persistence diagrams and persistent landscapes, in particular, uh, great rank invariance of Bethauser and company. But also, um, except this possibility for order preserving maps between posets, namely the rank invariance being the target poset being the non-negative integers, uh, we can also consider other types of order preserving maps that are, appear in the literature. Uh, specifically, I will talk about the other motivation, which is hierarchical clustering. Before I get to the uh, specific um, details of that, let me first uh, say uh, that here we're considering uh, a variant of partitions of sets, we consider subpartitions. So by a subpartition, a subpartition of a set Y is simply a partition of some subset of Y. So if we take the collection of all subpartitions, they form a poset, and uh, the inequalities are given by re uh, refinements of subpartitions. And uh, we saw actually in this paper that uh, so the poset of subpartitions forms a lattice. Uh, let me give you an example. Here we see a collection of all partitions of the set with three elements, X, Y, Z. So for example, X, Y, uh, this block and the block Z, they form a partition of X, Y, Z. But also we can have subpartitions. For example, here, the subpartition of X, Y, Z is given here X, the block, the single top block X and the single top block Y. So they form a partition of X, Y, which is a subset of X, Y, Z. So this is a subpartition of X, Y, Z. Now, this naturally appears in the setting of hierarchical clustering. Let me first start with a simple version, which is the, the setting that we have just partitions, uh, time varying partitions. There is a way to obtain from a given finite metric space, we can obtain a dendrogram by considering uh, first the via torus representation, some choices of parameter values parameter value is the radius around each point. As this radius increases, we see more and more connections and we therefore, as time increases, as this, as this parameter radius increases, we have different uh, partitions, uh, a, nest, uh, a sequence of partitions uh, of, of the underlying uh, complex of the metric space from the Vietori strips. But also more broadly, we can have, we, we can study things like dynamic graphs. So graph that change through time and again, this can be obtained by a metric space via the Vietori strips, by a dynamic metric space, by considering the Vietori strips rotation. But anyway, let's say that we have a dynamic graph, then what we can do, we can uh, consider the path components uh, of the graph for each time instance, and then we will obtain a subpartition. The, here we will obtain subpartition as opposed to partition because we also allow some vertices through time to disappear or, the, you know, so this, that's why we consider subpartitions. And the resulting um, output of this, uh, taking the path components would be a formigram, which is a generalization of dendrogram, because this can have, these formigrams can have also loops. Okay, um, so this is a work of human memory on stable signatures, uh, dynamic graphs and dynamic metric space. And, but also uh, these things, uh, the, the, the graph structure of these formigrams is quite related to 
um, phylogenetics, uh, specifically phylogenetic networks such as uh, ancestral recombination graphs that are used in biology. So these things, um, we can model them as order preserving maps from the poset of intervals, time intervals, to the poset of subpartitions. The idea is that for any time interval, we can consider um, the finest common coarsening of this uh, subpartitions along this interval, this time interval. That way we can obtain this order preserving map. But even more broadly, we can take any poset in this. Um, for example, we can take Rn in the source poset. And this setting uh, has been studied uh, by Carlson Memoli and it's called multi parameter hierarchical clustering, the source poset being Rn. Okay, so now um, I will go, uh, I will briefly describe the outline for the talk. I will talk about this methodology I told you for uh, computing interleaving for um, order preserving maps in a certain way if we assume that we have um, a dense subset uh, in, the, in, the, in the target poset, then we can break the computation of interleaving by parts. And then we'll, I will discuss with you some applications, uh, first about erosion distance and also some distances appearing in multi-parameter hierarchical clustering literature, uh, including the formigram uh, in particular. And also uh, we'll have some applications in tripod distance for filtered complexes. Let me first start with the main uh, idea. What's the main idea behind this? First, we consider in the source poset, we consider the poset to be equipped with a flow. So with a flow, I mean uh, a zero infinity action on the elements on the poset that respects the poset structure, meaning that uh, item two and three means that there is a zero infinity action on the elements. And item one means that the flow respects the poset. So that means that uh, flowing from T to S it is less or equal. So omega T is less or equal than omega S whenever T is less than S. And what's nice about uh, this flow on poset is that it gives naturally gives rise to an interleaving distance. And that is given by the, uh, the interleaving distance of, from elements P to the element Q is the infimum of all epsilon such that uh, P is comparable from below with um, the epsilon flow of Q and Q is comparable from below from the epsilon flow of P. A natural example to think of this is just take the Hausdorff distance, right? If you take the, the flow on some geodesic space, a subset of a geodesic space, take the epsilon flow, then you think of that this thickening uh, is precisely a flow and um, the associated relieving distance is the Hausdorff distance. Okay. Okay, but then what we also want to do, we also want to equip now the target poset when we study order preserving maps from P to Q. The target poset Q, we want to be equipped with a zero element. That means an element that is comparable with any other element from below. So zero is less or equal than any other element. And we also want uh, a joint dense subset B of Q to exist. Now, what is the meaning of that? Let me break down what we mean by this. By join, I mean a join of a set of elements in the poset. I mean uh, that it is the least common upper bound of that set, and we want that to exist. And what is right? So, what is the join dense? Uh, a subset is called join dense in the poset if each element in the poset uh, is actually the join of some elements in, in, in the set B. Okay, so that's the meaning of a join dense subset. Okay. In, in fact, we can consider the set B to be the set of joint irreducible elements itself. So we can consider uh, all uh, an element is joint irreducible if it cannot be written as a joint of non-trivial way. So it only can be written as a joint of itself and uh, zero element. Uh, now, the set of joint irreducible elements always exist if we take finite posets. So any finite poset is joint irreducibly generated always. Um, and in fact, our applications will involve the joint irreducible elements as a choice for, for the subset B. Okay. Now, uh, so with this setting, now we can define what is a poset valued persistent module uh, is an order preserving map from P to Q. Okay. And this P and Q is equipped, P is equipped with a flow and Q is equipped with this extra structure of a joint dense subset. Now we can take the collection of all uh, order preserving maps from P to Q. Now this is also going to be a poset uh, and it, in particular it's going to be equipped with a flow 
which is obtained by precomposing the epsilon flows on the source post. By doing so, we get the posset structure with the flow on these uh, maps between PTQ. In, in, and the posset structure, of course, is given by pointwise inequalities. Now, we're going to denote the induced interleaving distance on that posset by simply di, because we always study maps in persistence between, more, uh, between categories. So, so we'll denote with a traditional notation di. OK. So, so with, that, with that data, for any such um, order preserving maps, we can actually decompose this as the join uh, of some uh, simpler uh, order preserving maps in the same way as we're doing in persistence. So we take each of the joinants to be the indicator of some interval. And that interval is actually in the Alexandrov topology is an upper set. And it's given by the uh, pre much of uh, the up, uh, super level sets of the functor. And this gives, uh, one can show that this is an upper set uh, of P. So this is really analogous to the decomposition of persistent modules, but in, in that set in, in particular. Uh, note that the poset of upper sets also inherits a flow from omega. Think of that as a thickening, as an epsilon thickening of, the, of its elements from, from the flow on the poset P, like an epsilon ball around each one, the union of that. And um, so not just um, each element decomposes as the join, has a joint decomposition, but also uh, the interleaving distance itself also uh, decomposes as a join of interleaving distances of some simpler distances, namely the distance between um, these join amps. And uh, in, 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 that, in that sense, I mean basically the maximum because the join in the real line is precisely the maximum of the elements. Okay, so that's, so that's very nice because we can distribute the computation of the interleaving distance by computing these individual things. Um, notice that the left equation is analogous to the isometry theorem uh, between persistence uh, modules. So the bottleneck interleaving isometry theorem because we have the interleaving being able to distribute it with simpler interleavings like the bottleneck does for us. Okay, so now I will talk about the applications. First, I start with the erosion distance. If we have a positive with the flow and we have two order preserving maps from P to the non-negative integers with a reverse order, then the interleaving distance actually is a special case of the erosion distance by paddle. Uh, and so therefore, if, you have, if we have two such order preserving maps, for example, a pair of rank invariants of some module M and some module N, then we can calculate the erosion distance by, we can distribute the, the computation by uh, calculating these um, individual upper sets and taking the maximum overall, in, 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 overall the basis. Notice here that the basis itself, uh, the basis B uh, is the entire non-negative integers itself because each non-negative integer is zone irreducible, where the zone is the maximum. No, I'm uh, sorry, in, in that case, the reverse order. So it's that minimum. So each of them um, is its own irreducible element. So therefore, we take the maximum over the entire non-negative integers of these upper sets. So here you see the picture of these upper sets because we take the reverse order. Instead of having a uh, super level set, we have, uh, sorry, instead of having, uh, yes, instead of having super level set, we have sub level set because we take integers with the reverse order. So we take f inverse zero n instead. But notice something interesting going on here. Uh, the f inverse of if we were taking sub level set, so f inverse n plus one infinity, uh, in, if we take super level set, but that's precisely the support of the n plus one graded rank function uh, of Beckhauser and company. So here we see that the erosion distance reveals a connection between these two invariants, uh, namely our upper sets and uh, graded rank functions. Okay, now next I will discuss an application with parameter hierarchical cluster. Suppose we have a formigram, as I described before, we can take for each interval, we can study uh, the corresponding subpartition around that interval. So for each interval, think of the interval, time interval as a point in this upper diagonal and 
for each point, we, each point receives a value as a subpartition. So you see these different values of subpartitions of uh, the set X. Then we can apply our decomposition result. Then we can represent this order preserving maps, this cursive, right, valued in the subpartitions. Uh, we can represent this um, as the join of other simpler to describe uh, uh, persistent subpartitions, namely these different upper sets. And, and in, in particular, we can actually calculate the former gramature living distance by calculating these individual things because of our main result, which is the decomposition result. And now here, the, the base B here is the joint irreducibles. The joint irreducible elements are given by the singleton and the doubleton subpartitions. Those are the only ones that are joint irreducible in the posit of subpartitions. So the singleton and, and the doubleton subpartitions, those are the only ones that are. So that way we obtain this decomposition of the forming and distance. And what's nice is that it allows us to compute actually the form grant. This is, uh, we can give an upper bound on the computational capacity of this. And it turns out it's polynomial, where n is the cardinality of, of the set X, and m and n prime are the cardinality of the critical numbers, the critical points of uh, the form grant theta and theta prime. So it allows to calculate this efficiently, this uh, joint decomposition of the interleaving distance. Even more, we can be more general and talk about multi-parameter hierarchical clusterings, F and G. Uh, we still get the composition as the maximum of a household distance between upper sets. And those are upper sets of Rn now, more broadly. Okay, and more broadly, uh, we can talk about uh, comparison of um, forming grams over different underlying sets. And this is done by uh, Kim and Memoli. Where the idea is that you have the minimum taken over all tripods now, so you take the minimum of the forming gram distances taking over all different tripods. And here, notice that I didn't wrote theta and theta prime or theta x, theta y. I wrote a five star. The idea is that to consider the pullbacks. So we can take the pullback uh, on subpartitions over z of a common z, set z. And now the pullback here, I'm giving the specific definition. The pullback of subpartition via uh, phi of x, this uh, surjection, is the subpartition of z defined by taking the pre-images of the blocks uh, of the partition, uh, subpartitions of x, subpartition of x. So we're taking the pre of, of those blocks. Um, and now what we found is that because of our decomposition, we can actually express the formigram distance this way, but not, notice also that here there is no phi star, there is no um, the pullback because we actually know that the pullback because of the pullback operation any tripod can be equivalently thought of as a correspondence between x and y so the, using this uh, elementary fact and also our decomposition then we're able to rewrite the gromo of distance this way and notes here the similarity uh, because um, the definition of human memory was actually a generalization of gromo hausdorff distance for ultra metrics induced by the dendrograms. And here we also have a similarity with the gromo hausdorff because we have this mean and max over all correspondences. And again, this mean max formula for gromo hausdorff for formigrams is obtained because of our metric decomposition of feature living distance. And finally, uh, I want to say that. The uh, gromo hausdorff of formigrams has exactly the same structure also as the metric DQ on persistent structures by Carlson Memoli, and also as the correspondence interleaving distance on hierarchical clusterings of Rowland's Coca-Cola. The only difference is that they are all defined over different source posits. So for formigrams defined over int, the intervals of R, uh, DQ over uh, R2 and hierarchical clusterings of Rolls Coca-Cola over Rn. But the structure is still the same. It's mean max with correspondences, just like uh, as, as I wrote it here. Okay, so we talk about these two applications of our decomposition result. So lastly, I want to say that we also have an application on tripod distance of filter complexes. So uh, we saw that we, we realized the tripod distance of filter, filter complexes uh, as a special case of an interleaving distance. And um, because of this realization of the interleaving distance uh, using our metric decomposition of 
this uh, interleaving distance over the same source faucet, we're able to actually much more generalize it to a more general setting of filter complexes over any um, field indexing faucet P, not just the real line. Um, for that, you can see the archive or ask me more details. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, everybody, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, applaud the speaker. Thank you. So, do we have any questions for Anastasios? Feel free to unmute yourself. I'll start with a question. Oh, let, let's let's start with the one in the chat, Elkanan. Uh, sure. Actually, I can ask it. So I have a question from Alexei Prokopiev. Is there any code available for the hierarchical clustering case? Uh, there is code available for the case of formigrams. And uh, this is by Wujin uh, Kim and Fakudu Memory. And you can see that in Network Data Analysis website. Um, that's the one I know. The, uh, Oh, yeah, well, so. yeah but, so let me add a comment about formigram interleaving. I think formigram interleaving distance in the website is, is not yet available. That That's just, com maybe there is something about computing formigram, but computing the distance between formigram is not yet, I think. That's available. right, yeah. Thank you, Wilson. Yeah. Uh, there is a follow-up question, which is, um, do you have any applications um, either on like toy synthetic data or on a real um, real data for the methods in the talk? Um, well, certainly there are uh, applications uh, we discussed with Wooden uh, on flocking uh, behavior on animals, but also we were thinking recently uh, applications in phylogenetic networks, uh, like ancestral combination graphs, which we think that uh, there would be some connection there with the formigram setting for sure. And uh, is that in the paper or is that uh, in progress? It's in progress, it's not in paper. Okay. I'll ask my question. So you mentioned that these various notions of distance were really the same definition, but just with different underlying base post sets. Um, yes, so, yes. you know, your work and Kim Mamoli and, and Skokola. Um, are there results that therefore um, maybe hold for all three, or are there, you know, results that were published in one context that sort of just transfer more generally into the other ones as well, or do they have quite different uh, theories behind them? Uh, so the, the idea is that um, it's twofold, I think, the, the application part is, uh, on one hand, we connect different metrics together because of this decomposition, but there is also uh, some of the metrics didn't involve some metric decomposition to begin with, but here uh, our methodology also implies that you can also decompose them further, for example, the formula into the maximum over some upper sets, and uh, that also has some computa computability um, refinement to the whole, uh, all, this idea of uh, studying distances, because we also have uh, these uh, computational results that you can uh, actually have an estimate uh, of, for example, computing the formigram distance can be done polynomial time. And this can be, this is done only by considering this metric decomposition. Otherwise, it's uh, difficult to understand uh, the complex of the distance. But I'm Thanks. not talking about the gromo hausdorff I'm talking about the formigram. The gromo hausdorff case is NB hard. Mm -hmm. But we think that it's applicable for phylogenetics if you have this common underlying set, uh, then this may be applicable and it's good that it's polynomial time computable. Thank you for your question. Um, so actually I have a follow-up question of my own. It's kind of open-ended, so if it doesn't make sense, you'll feel free to let me know. So I'm wondering how the results here could inform the following process. So let's suppose you start you you were interested in evolving the initial post set over time in the sense that maybe you start with a very simple post set, which in the persistence context might correspond to a very, uh, you know, filtration with very few values being tested. 
right. then you wanted to, in some informed way, add sort of enrich the post set, say add extra elements into the post set, um, and you wanted to do it in an intelligent way that gave you as much information as possible. And it seems to be the from the structure of um, of these results, if I understand correctly, if you sort of know where in the post set you're adding the elements, you can kind of get control over how the distance is going to evolve. Is, yeah, this is, does that uh, make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a reasonable thing to, to study. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this idea of decomposing both the structure of the gadgets that you study and order preserving mass, but also the metric at the same time, you're controlling it, how it changes by this decomposition, studying how this decomposition changes. Yeah, I think that would be fruitful thing to do. I don't have some specific uh, idea in mind, but I mean, uh, methodology of how you can achieve this, but I'm sure that uh, this decomposition can bring insights on how to do that. Yeah, certainly. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have actually one, one follow-up question from Alexei. So in hierarchical clustering, it is often hard to come up with the clustering criteria. Does your approach provide any help with that? Can you repeat, and it doesn't provide any criteria? Um, so in, in hierarchical clustering, the question asks, it is often hard to come up with the clustering criteria. Alexei, can you clarify that question? Or maybe you can unmute yourself if that's convenient too. Oh, all right, all right. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, at first, thank you uh, well, for the talk. My question was about, so like I'm a data scientist, so I don't really know much about TDA or in general, but the application of your method was, uh, I was curious in the application of your method in, the hierarch in this multidimensional hierarchical clustering thing. But the thing is that when you do hierarchical clustering and you have like this parameter when you like try to optimize for the linkage and for the different linkages, you have different clusters. And the, the, the task is is to define the clustering criteria. So like in uh, for each value of the parameter of the linkage, like you can see like actual clusters and it's very hard sometimes people will come up with different methods like elbow methods and etc. And like, is there, a, is your applier approach kind of helps with that because like it's kind of one of the major issues of the hierarchical clustering. And if like your approach would provide something new, it would be very good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, I would say uh, the new thing that uh, that we bring here is a, a, also a nice control, a positive theoretic control of the metric. So maybe um, if it doesn't answer quite the question uh, directly, this metric decomposition of us, at least it can, um, for example, some some given problems in hierarchical class that have been solved or partially solved, at, at least it can bring insights from a metric geometric point of view that you can control these values by just thinking of them as metric uh, values that something happens to the metric. Because uh, now you also have control over the metric between a pair of formula. So you can consider, for example, epsilon ball around some given dendrogram, for example, or some given formula more generally. So you can control what's, what's going on uh, around some specific structure. So maybe this can bring insights to, or maybe reformulate some existing results on finding this specific value for the dendrogram, which is optimal perhaps from a geometric point of view. That's, that's my, that's what I think that's, yeah. That's my take on this. Yeah, sounds very interesting. Thank you. Like, I'm Thank still for looking for. Uh, uh, yeah, it would be cool to have a like link to the repo attached to the lecture or something to play around with it later. Maybe like when it's going to be available, of course. Sure, I can talk with the organizers too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that.